Welcome to Friedman Adventures, your home for fishing, food, and travel. And now, let's find your adventure on another edition of Friedman Adventures. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is great to be back with you again here on Friedman Adventures, the morning briefing, as we get you caught up on everything that's going on. I'm down here with a couple of good friends of mine, Mike and Fish. They are surf fishing right behind me. So as Fish just said, the pressure is on. I want to fish on camera today. Not a frozen fish, not one that you dig out of a bag or something. I want a real fish that come out of the surf. Well, it's great to be with you. We've got a lot to cover with you because as you can see, what a difference a day makes. It is lovely down here. It's early morning, it's warm, it's sunny. There's some high surf as you can see behind me, but for the most part, it's just an entirely different day. And that leads to a lot of optimism for what might happen out on the water. Last night, I called my friend Tino Valentine. Tino runs the Freedom out of 22nd Street Landing. I said, hey, are you running tonight? And uh, he asked me if I'd checked in with my psychiatrist lately. Uh, it was just still really nasty last night, really nasty weather. We've gone through that period now, and here we've come out on the other side with some much better weather, and it looks like we're going to have pretty good weather here for a stretch now. And that includes down there off Ensenada, all the way up into the Channel Islands. Areas of the Channel Islands are going to be windy. Some other areas are going to be good. Our Wednesday night trip on the Endeavor looks good in terms of the weather right now. So fingers crossed, we're going to catch some white sea bass. Hey, all you guys who are on that Endeavor trip, I'll, I'll be giving you a call here shortly. But in case you're watching right now, I'm going to have like a little deli spread Wednesday night for you. So there'll be sandwiches and some snacks and everything else in case you're running late. Don't worry about it. I'll have a nice little deli uh whatever you call it i'll be putting some deli foods out there for you all all right let's talk about bluefin tuna well first of all the weather's good we've just come out of the blow my preoccupation my worry is did water temperatures plummet to the point where the fish have locked jaw we've talked about it a lot how important conditions are to all of this and once again when that water temp drops too much sometimes the fish get locked jaw so we'll see if that is indeed the case last time at blue we did have that Kind of residual slower fishing and then it got rolling again only time will tell and it was a pretty good blow but i am hoping that this thing comes roaring back down there in san diego and of course elsewhere up and down the coast good bluefin tuna fishing down there in san diego previous to this blow a lot of that 25 to 40 50 pound bluefin tuna some up over 100 pounds nighttime fishing perhaps the best but it's also been pretty darn good during the daytime and so we're going to continue to monitor that for you very closely at night it's going to be the knife jigs the flat fall jigs that makes all the difference in the world and sometimes those really big jigs are working well but sometimes the smaller ones as sam down there at island fishing tackle said in his latest great instructional video with us he was talking about some of the smaller lures making a real difference there are fish being taken in the daytime also Sometimes that's on a fly line bait, so opsin fluorocarbon is going to be the best way to make that happen. Uh, 25 to 30 pound test, choosing a really good hot bait, that makes all the difference in the world. So we'll keep our eyes on it and see how that goes. Now the Coronado Islands, which are really a stone's throw from Point Loma, that's what makes those islands so great. I've been fishing those islands for 50 years or so. Yeah, about 50. Oh my God, I'm... I'm so freaking old. But anyway, uh, those islands have been showing some signal on Yellowtail. The day boats, you know, the Grande, the San Diego, uh, the Liberty, um, the Mission Bell, I don't believe has been out. I don't think Sean's been out lately. Malahini, you know, those day boats, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. They've been getting a signal, a sign of that Yellowtail. You think it might go at some point in time, and we are hoping that will indeed be the case here very, very soon. Running gun-type fishing. 
throwing the iron is a good way to get it done. We just put up uh, how to choose a good iron for yellowtail. So check that out before you jump on down there and make sure you have some of the suggestions that Sam De La Torre had for you. Make sure some of those lures are in jigs or in your tackle box. So there hasn't been any big numbers on the yellowtail. We see them zooming around there. This drop in water temperature, not, not sure what that's going to uh, portend for the future, but we'll creep back into it here. And I think that hopefully we'll see some better numbers. And at some point in time, those islands are going to go up and that will be fantastic. There's been white fish and rockfish. So if you're out there, you're able to fill the sacks with some pretty good eating fish. Up and down the coast, we definitely had that drop in water temperature because I put my little toes out there in the water and it was chilly this morning. But I was looking at some of the buoy temps and we did have a drop in water temp. So we'll see where we go on that. Hopefully that's not going to shut down the little bit of bass fishing, the little bit of barracuda fishing that we saw mostly on the coast, all the way up the coast. It's rockfish, sculpin, a few big sand bass, occasional good calico bass bite for the sport boats, private boaters that can get on the rock, right, can do even better than that. Uh, we've seen that barracuda from Ensenada all the way up into the Channel Islands. Sprinklings, no big numbers, but a sure sign that spring is in play, that things are starting to move in the right direction. Now, San Clemente Island, the reason I called Tino is because he had such an exceptional day a couple days ago when he was out there with 14 nice yellowtail, 10 white sea bass. Heck, they even had a thresher shark and they also had a halibut to go along with it. So there has been some really good signal out there and Tino is at it again tonight. Fishing the live squid in a lot of those bites for Tino here recently. Uh, those fish have been eating the heavy line, 40 pound ops and fluorocarbon. Uh, you could even probably bump up to 50 or heavier but it's been very, very good. And there's been some gray light bites, which is really awesome. I mean, when you get your day started before the sun even comes up, you have got to love that. So really good signal out there a few days ago. Did the wind reduce the water temp to the point where it's gonna take a little while to rebound? We'll get an answer for you here probably in the next 24 hours. Channel Island area up there, they've been dealing with some wind, but in between that, there's been good signal of white sea bass. I think you saw that video we took into the wheelhouse of the Endeavor with Tucker McCombs. Nice big nugget of white sea bass. He had to go around on 30 to 50 pound fish. There's been some big halibut. The rock fishing's been excellent. Looks like the weather's gonna settle down in some of the areas where that sea bass has been biting. So it looks good for this week. I think you might see that start to rock and roll here pretty soon. It looked really, really good up there in that neck of the woods. Uh, once again, here in the surf, we're just getting back to normal. Fish is behind me. As you can see, his lovely wife, Kim, is right up here. And over here we have Mike. So hopefully we're going to see that fish turn on here before I sign off. I want to see fish catch a big corvina or a big yellow pin croaker or a halibut or something. These guys are fishing with sandworms and uh, it looks like a gorgeous day. Surf's pretty big, but there's no wind on it, so they definitely can catch a few fish. And as we move into the week and talking about surf fishing, I'll remind you that right down the street here at Big Fish Bait and Tackle, they've got all kinds of bait and tackle for your surf fishing needs, but down this way toward uh, Bolsa Chica and even further south down there around Dana, there's been some halibut taken here recently, a few barred perch, a little bit of yellowfin croaker, that's gonna kick into gear, that YFC, as the water continues to warm up. And there's been a good sign of Corvina this year. Really, really good. The last couple of years, oh man, we got a biter back here. Come on, fish! I love this guy. Right on camera, Kim, how can you beat it? Um, so he's on a fish, so perfect timing. I don't know how I could be on the surf fishing report with him catching a fish. He'll bring it up if, uh, if he indeed lands it. Let me look back here. Oh, it's chasing him up the beach here. I don't know. Let's see. Can you all see fish there? All right, we're going to let him do his thing, and hopefully he's going to come up with a fish. I love it live. Here we go. Fish are biting in the surf. The way that's acting, if it is a fish, it acts like a bat ray or something like that. So we'll keep our eyes on it. So halibut on the Lucky Craft, that is something that you can concentrate on. Up there by the Santa Monica Bay, I was on the Corvina 
uh, those fish are in the shallows. You can catch them on the low tide. Lighter line is definitely the key. And as I've told you before, you know, those corvina are just cruising up the beach and they're looking for something to eat. Sand crabs, sand worms, mussels, whatever the waves have broken loose out of the surf. That's what they're going to feed on. And they just continue to kind of move, move, move. So when you see them, you can sprint up ahead of them, or in my case, jog gingerly, and get right in front of them and then toss your bait. So you present your bait about six feet in front of them. The theory is that they'll swim right into it and then we'll have you a Corvina. Well, I was wrong about fish. That does not look like a bat ray. It looks like something maybe a yellowfin croaker he's yelling at mike and uh, we'll get a look at it here in a moment so surf fishing definitely on the right track now i have to say one thing about fish he is really an exceptional fisherman and as he walks up here i want to also tell you that we're going to be doing a surf fishing day here very very soon he's going to be part of it hey over here my friend nice way hey we're we're on come on What's wrong with you all right here's fish hold your fish up to, that's a nice yellow is that a corvina or a yellowfin yeah. croaker oh it's a nice big corvina hold it right up there fish you can see man that's a beautiful fish how about that you caught that on sandworm uh bloodworm bloodworm you're the man thank you man good Got job it. Got it. fish will be part of that surf fishing day that we're going to have out here so uh man i'm stoked to see that really really great so nice Corvina, and they're fishing way, way, way out there with a big heavy sinker, and nice to see him catching fish. All right, May the 15th, uh, don't forget everybody, uh, May the 15th, before I forget, we have our jig fishing workshop at Long Beach Marine Stadium. It's going to be from 8 in the morning until 11. The gates open at 8, so if you showed up there at 810 or 805, you're going to be good. You can drive right through, and we're going to have probably around 15 instructors. So if you're a novice angler and you want to learn how to throw the iron, kids, come on down. We'll put you with the right instructor. Intermediate, we'll be able to put you with the right instructor then. And if you're really a pro, then we can get you in the casting contest. There's going to be all kinds of great fun, all kinds of great instruction, and hopefully we are going to make you a better jig fisherman for the coming year. I am positive about that. Jeff Yeomans, 540 Slingers Club. He's so excited about this and I'm so excited to have him because he is a really quality person, a veteran and uh, just a super good guy. And Sam De La Torre is gonna bring some of his office staff down. He'll be there to tutor you along and help you along. If you have your rods and jigs, you wanna bring them down, see how they swim, learn a little bit more about how the mechanics work, you can do that. If not, we got you covered. We got all your rods and everything else. And don't forget, all you have to do is show up. That's it. Cup of coffee. If you'd rather just have a cup of coffee, I'm always game for that. Or if you just want to sit around and chat a little bit, we can do that also. All right, so that's May the 15th after party at Sholb in Long Beach starting at 1130 on 4th Street in Long Beach, California. That's going to be a lot of fun. Of course, Check out some of Jason's great recipes as he's been doing a magnificent job. And we also will be drawing our raffle prize over there at Shoal, selling tickets at our event and then drawing a raffle prize over there at Shoal. All right. I mean, come on. That was perfect. Fish with a nice Corvina. It's nice to see that. He's off. He's been fishing 10, 15 minutes. He's just getting going here. And hopefully we'll see even more of that. And hopefully this weather is going to continue to be really, really nice. All right, everybody. Always good to be with you. Lots going on here on the Freedman Adventures channel. I'll see all of you great guys who signed up for the Endeavor trip. Oh, by the way, we do have one opening on that trip. One lucky person can jump on that Endeavor trip. Do partying Wednesday night out of Ventura Sword Fishing, 10 p.m. And then we will be back the following night around 7, I'm guessing. Something like that. So it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully you'll be able to grab that last spot. Don't worry about uh, snacks that first night. I got you covered on that. And again, we'll see you back here with another update. All day long we'll be monitoring it. And of course we'll have more instructional videos. It's all about fishing, food, and travel on the Freedman Adventures 
YouTube channel. Take care, my friends. We'll see you soon. And as we wound up our day down on the beach and I started to head back home, I saw all of these people going by. They were going to do a swim out for a funeral to remember a dear loved one who had just passed away. Don't know who he was, but he had a lot of friends and he loved that sea just like you and me. So we say rest in peace. Our thoughts and prayers are with you and all of your loved ones.